Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great day so far. So what do I have now? I've got a 14 Honda Odyssey with a misfire. It was already in the shop when I got here. Apparently it got towed in last night and they just put it straight in the shop. Um, after I left, that is. So I, it's cold. I haven't started. I haven't done anything. I just hooked a scanner up to it. And what I'm seeing on the scanner is a cylinder number three misfire, a PO303. Now, if I'm not mistaken on a Honda, cylinder number three is the back bank closest to the transmission. So let me just show you on the scanner real quick what I got. So here we go. Permanent and temporary codes. I did a scan. Communication errors. I'm not worried about those. Uh, see, the ABS actually held a um, ECM-PCM relation failure. Hmm. I wonder if that's because of voltage, which is very... Yeah, see, okay, battery voltage. Yeah, a lot of times you'll find the communication codes and stuff like that have a lot to do with battery voltages. So I am not going to worry about any of those. Yeah, I'm just going to worry about the misfire. So we got PO303. You've already seen that. So let's start it up and um, see what we got. It's only got 83,000 miles. So if I had the venture, I guess it's probably a bad coil. Uh, yeah, it's misfiring, that's for sure. But it's nice and cold now, so I don't really have to worry about it. Yeah. You can see it. See it shaking? All right, let me take this upper cover off and start to... Let me pull the coils out. Maybe I'm going to swap the coils and see. That's what I did do, is I went with the scanner, and I went into data. And as you can see here, it has... Cylinder 3 misfire. I don't know what... Okay, total misfire is what I'm looking for. So, let's see. It's just above that white line. Let's actually start it up again. I don't want to let it get hot. Yeah, you can see it jumping. That's good. So, now what I'm going to do is let me get that cover off and see. Because, like I said, I'm going to probably just try to swap coils uh, to see how I can make out with that. Because if I can swap coils and the fault follows the coils, then I know it's a bad coil. So let's go that route and see what happens. I have the engine cover off just because I wanted to show you. You see the coils down there, and 1, 3, and 5 is, I mean, yeah, 1, 3, and 5 are in the back. Duh, lost my train of thought there. Actually, it could be 1, 2, 3, but 3 is in the back. I know that for sure. So now to get to the coil, the coil is all the way down in back here. So. It's actually right here. I can put my hand on it. So I'm going to just switch the two coils just to see if the misfire moves from one spot to another. So let me get that moved over. I'm not going to film this whole thing. It's just basically I'm bolting it and pulling it out. Hopefully everything will come out with no issue. Hopefully I have enough room and I don't take other stuff apart. Sometimes you do. I don't recall on these. But let me get that going. All right, so what I did was I actually swapped. Uh, it's one, two, three in the back and then four, five, six in the front. If I'm not mistaken, that's how it should be. So I took three and I was going to swap it with two, but the problem is two is a real pain to get in and out because of the AC lines. So what, as I did, what I did was I went to cylinder number four, I pulled four out, I swapped four uh, with three. So four is the first one on the bank closest to the radiator, and three is the bank closest to the firewall and towards the tranny. So let's see what happens when I go to start this up now. Oops, let's shut that off. All right, so let's start it up. Actually, let me get it into run mode first. So I may have to go to that screen. It may have taken me out of it. I don't know. Okay. All right, so there we go. There's cylinder three. Let's see what happens. Actually, what it should do is go cylinder three and four. That would make the most sense. All right, so let's see what happens here. Oh, still on three. Okay, so now what's the problem? 
now we have, let me shut this off. Now I gotta check to see is, is the coil firing on three? Like, am I getting a signal there? Did the mouse chew through a wire somewhere? That's the next place to start. Um, if everything looks good there and the coil is firing, then we're gonna have to, uh, you know, look into injectors or possibly mechanical failure. Um, since the motor's quiet I, and it happened suddenly, I kind of doubt it's a mechanical failure, but you never know. So let's do that. Let me pull that coil out. Let me check for spark. All right, so there we go. I have my spark tester hooked to ground into the coil for number three. And let's see if we have spark. And something's ringing a bell in my head that these things had a problem with piston rings. Now let's try starting it. Okay. She's a runner. And we have spark. I don't know if you can see that. It's roughly for you to see it. It's steady for me, but it may look different to the camera eye. All right, let's shut it down. All right, so we have spark. We know that. And it's cylinder number three that's misfiring. And it is cylinders one, two, three in the back, four, five, six in the front. I remember that now. Um, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that these had a problem with piston rings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the spark plug out and I'm gonna see what that looks like and uh, see if it's fouled out. If it's fouled out, I mean, I'll throw another plug in it, but it may have to go to the dealer. So let's pull the plug out and see what we got. Okay, I just got that plug out and it's oil fouled. Check it out. So, actually, let me turn the light on here. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's oil fouled right there. I mean, I've seen worse. But I think I'm gonna, let me call a customer and see if they wanna put one plug in or six plugs in. Because like I said, they're gonna have to go to the dealer at this point, because this is definitely a problem. All right, let's go that route and see what happens. All right, so here we go. One new spark plug that's gonna go in. So let's get this installed and see if it clears up the misfire for now. Okay, so that plug is in place. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in the car, turn the ignition on, get the screen to the misfires. So this way I can actually see where it's at. So, get it to the run, it's a push start. So, so I gotta get to the run position first. Now let me go into the computer, turn that off. So you can actually see it. Back into that. Okay, so there we are back on three. So let's start up and see what happens. Oh, the battery's just about dead too. But the misfire is gone. There's a couple of misfires right in the beginning, probably because of a bit of oil that was in the cylinders. But the misfire is gone. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I didn't notice if it puffed out any, it probably did. So now really the only thing I have left to do, I didn't put the uh, nuts on the coils. Once I hold the coils in place, because these are bolt down coils. And if you look, see I'm missing the nut, there's a nut right there. So let me put the nuts on and let's button this up. Engine covers on, battery chargers on. Had that on there for a little bit now. So let's go in, let's clear codes. And then we can start it back up and then this thing will be all ready for the customer. Double tap, get back into it. All right, so let's exit this because we know the misfire is gone. Actually, let's go back completely, and we're going to clear all the codes that were read in the code scan. Let's let this run. Come on. Please wait. That's what I'm doing. Let's go. There we go. So now it's just clearing out all the modules.
And then once that's done, I'm going to start it back up and then the vehicle's ready for the customer. All right. Hope you got something out of that video. If you could, hit that uh, like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.